thank you very much for that introduction and also for, for the opportunity to speak to you here today. Um, it's a real pleasure to be in this beautiful building and uh, thank you to, all, to you all for, for coming along. I'd like to start by sharing with you um, a quotation by the Booker Prize-winning novelist and art critic John Berger. The strange power of art is that sometimes it can show that what people have in common is more urgent than what differentiates them. This statement raises questions about difference, uh, social inclusion, the power of the arts to bring people together uh, to promote social cohesion, um, all of which are closely intertwined with discussions I'll uh, raise today and discuss today about changing perceptions of disability and accessibility. My focus is on arts accessibility for all, um, so I'll be ex exploring inclusive arts, um, an integrated form of accessibility which both embraces diversity and uh, includes all. Um, I'll concentrate on access facilities for people with varying visual and hearing ability um, and disabilities and uh, I'll present some of my findings from an ongoing research project investigating arts access in Northern Ireland and Great Britain. In the recent past, there have been uh, rapid and exciting developments in arts access, pushing the boundaries of prevailing mentalities towards accessibility and disability. Pioneering access provisions have been introduced and uh, advanced technological solutions are continually increasing. So uh, there is an urgent need to support a continuous systematic appraisal or reappraisal and training in up-to-date and inclusive arts accessibility. Uh, this call responds to um, this call to action responds to the Northern Ireland and EU disability strategies and the, the UN requirement to monitor implementation of the, the Convention on the Rights for, for Persons with Disabilities. It's also crucial to consider the impact of innovative arts access solutions on disability strategies and policies um, in other related sectors, um, such as uh, cultural, health and educational sectors. Um, and I'll be addressing this issue with regard to the wider discussion about shifting attitudes to disability and accessibility. At the core of this discussion is the legal and social recognition of access as a human right, a, a fundamental human right. Access is for everyone and the arts, access to the arts is no exception. This affirmation is enshrined uh, in legislation at international, um, EU and national level. Nevertheless, as a whole, society's response to accessibility implementation remains slow and further requirements, uh, further advancements are required to overcome uh, current linguistic, uh, sociocultural and sensory barriers. This need for accelerated progress is uh, accentuated by the growing number of people with, with sight and hearing loss in ageing populations, as Paula mentioned earlier. For instance, um, Action on Hearing Loss reports that uh, hearing loss is a major public health issue affecting over 10 million people in the UK. That's one in six of the population. And by 2031, this figure will have grown to more than 14.5 million people. Similarly, the Royal National Institute for the Blind projects more than a doubling in the numbers of people with partial sight and blindness in the UK to nearly 4 million people by 2050. These rising numbers and uh, legislative demands have propelled the, the need to monitor access implementation to the forefront of political and social debate. 
Furthermore, they highlight the need to, um, the pressing need, in fact, to address the, the following questions. How can we review our approach to access to empower people with varying visual and hearing ability so that they can fully enjoy their rights as citizens? Another question is, how do we endorse equitable access and good practice in the implementation of legislation? And how can we ensure that arts venues are proactively reaching out to include everyone and achieve greater equality of opportunity? A starting point for, these, uh, for responding to these questions is uh, researching and assessing current arts access provisions to um, identify problem areas and establish action points. In line with legislation, uh, arts venues in the UK and internationally are increasingly providing access facilities for people with varying visual and hearing ability, although uh, provisions remain limited. Increased exposure to multimedia is also raising audience expectations for a more inclusive, uh, interactive and multi-sensory experience. And uh, there is a wide range of access facilities which is rapidly expanding with uh, pioneering technology. To give you an idea of uh, the variety of existing access provisions for people with uh, varying visual and hearing ability, um, I've got a, a list here on the slide of some of the access facilities targeted primarily at uh, blind and partially sighted patrons. So these include uh, audio description, touch tour, uh, braille provisions such as uh, braille program notes, braille libretti, uh, braille seating guides and so on. Um, then there's also audio subtitling, large print materials, provisions for guide dogs, uh, thermoforms, which uh, are a, a 3D print uh, or tactile print, as shown on the, the left-hand photo, um, and haptic technology. An example of haptic technology, which appeals primarily to the sense of touch, is shown in the right-hand photo. Um, this photo shows a, a lady holding a red cube, and this is a haptic device which vibrates and moves, uh, working uh, similarly to a compass. Two of the more prevalent access facilities are audio description and touch tours. Audio description is similar to uh, a radio sports commentary. Um, it's a verbal commentary in audio format, providing information about primarily the visual aspects of a work of art or an event, um, whether it's a, a painting, a, a, um, a play, television program, or a photo. For instance, um, I gave an audio description of the, the photo of the lady on the previous slide. At present in the UK, audio description is usually only provided for blind and partially sighted patrons uh, via wireless headphones, as shown in the left-hand photo. However, experiments with new modes of delivery via mobile phones provide the opportunity to offer facilities such as audio description to a wider audience, including sighted patrons. Now, you might be wondering uh, why offer audio description to sighted patrons. Um, but I'll discuss some of the benefits of this more inclusive access shortly. Another facility that works in conjunction with audio description is, um, and, and may appeal to sighted audience members again, is the touch tour. Um, these are tours, usually guided, of uh, an exhibition or of the stage, in which the participants have the opportunity to touch items on display um, or um, items of the set, such as props, um, as, you, as shown in, in the right-hand photo, um, or maybe even uh, to touch uh, a member of the cast in, in costume, if you're lucky. At present, uh, research suggests that the availability of audio description and touch tours in Northern Ireland venues remains limited, in Northern Ireland arts venues. 
This is demonstrated by the, the pie charts on the slide, which show data collected as part of an ongoing research project uh, looking into arts access. And this is data from, collected from various venues across the 20 local government districts. So the charts show that uh, the majority of venues have no events at all with either audio description or touch tours. Uh, that's the, the, the light yellow portions of the pies. And uh, in view of the proven benefits of these access facilities, this deficit requires attention to prevent exclusion. For the rising number of people with hearing loss, uh, access facilities include sign language interpreting, subtitles or surtitles, captioning for the deaf and hard of hearing, uh, hearing loops, provisions for hearing dogs, and assistive technologies such as uh, smart glasses, which I'll explain in a minute. For instance, uh, the photo shows uh, an opera sign language interpreter and subtitles at the periphery of the stage. These facilities are only provided at limited numbers of events per year, uh, which of course restricts inclusion. And in fact, uh, statistics, these, these pie charts demonstrate the, the high proportion of arts venues at which only one or two or even no sign language interpreted or captioned events are available per year. And that's shown by the, the, the segments, the yellow, orange and red segments. Therefore, at the majority of venues, patrons wishing to use facilities, wishing to use these facilities, have very little or no choice at all regarding the events that they can attend. The next graph shows the distribution of the percentage of venues at which uh, each of the access facilities is available for at least one uh, event per year. So, for example, the, the first column demonstrates that 56% uh, of venues have no audio-described events. The limited availability of audio description and uh, subtitles or surtitles at less than 50% of the participating venues is an unexpected finding, um, as these are both well-established access facilities. So this reiterates the need for action to uh, improve arts access in Northern Ireland. This is highlighted by comparison with English National Opera, uh, which provides surtitles for all performances, and with Opera North and Welsh National Opera, which usually provide between three and five audio-described performances per venue per year. Although the availability of some of the access facilities is limited, comments from participating arts venues expressed a, a clear desire to improve and to explore new access solutions. So the move towards a new form of integrated access can be initiated. <coughs> This fresh approach to uh, the arts or, and to arts access advocates incorporating access concepts from the design stage to include all whilst also offering patrons individual choice, for example, via uh, smart glasses, as shown in the photo. From a technological perspective, the prospect of achieving inclusive arts is feasible, increasingly feasible. However, uh, attitudinal barriers remain. The need to overcome attitudinal barriers and to bridge the gap between the limited availability of arts access and the rapidly expanding access options offered by uh, pioneering technology is one of the, the key findings of the project. It is our collective responsibility to accelerate the implementation of arts access legislation and access legislation. And to ensure this, we need to clarify the practical changes required in the day-to-day -day operations in the arts. Now, the project findings highlighted three problem areas requiring action. 
attitudes to disability and accessibility, financial considerations and accessibility training. The catalyst for the progression towards uh, uh, inclusive access is a change in mentalities regarding disability. This progression is hindered by the perception of a, a dichotomous distinction between disabled and able-bodied people, viewing disabled people as a separate group with, with special needs, rather than considering, considering society as a collective whole with a spectrum of varying disabilities and abilities. Attitudes such as these are manifested in the current provision of access facilities in arts venues, which often remains divisive. For example, uh, segregated seating allocations, uh, the limited number of performances at which access facilities are provided, uh, which of course restricts the freedom of choice, and constraints regarding the users of access facilities. This approach of uh, compartmentalizing people into disabled and able-bodied or blind and sighted, etc., is linked to the perception of accessibility as an afterthought, uh, a supplementary provision rather than as integral to the production and design process. The outcome of such attitudes is exclusion and the, the frequent raising of questions such as uh, why go to the opera if you're deaf or uh, why go to see or rather visit the Mona Lisa if you're blind. In order to provide answers to these questions and to prevent exclusion, uh, we must take action. For instance, promoting dialogue and providing more opportunities for the general public to engage with access facilities by making them more widely available for everyone. Raising awareness about disability and access is an ongoing process which research has suggested requires increased visibility and marketing. Raising awareness amongst young people is fundamental, for example, through uh, school trips or, uh, to arts events with access facilities um, or through talks, workshops, and uh, further integrating access awareness into the curriculum. Raising public awareness about the uh, diversity of the audience is also crucial. There are numerous different types and degrees of visual and hearing ability, including sighted, uh, totally blind, hearing, hard of hearing, etc. And a lack of appreciation of this diversity can lead to misunderstandings about the appeal and the benefits of the arts for people with sight or hearing loss. In fact, the inherent capacity of the arts to engage multiple senses lends them to inclusion. And, of course, access provisions facilitate access to a multi-sensory experience. Moreover, the arts are a social activity. So whether or not a person is profoundly deaf or hard of hearing, etc., he or she may want to attend the opera to share this social activity and experience the sound in different ways through various combinations of hearing, sight, uh, or touch according to the type or degree of deafness. Similarly, depending on the type and degree of blindness, uh, a person may have different experiences of light, color, etc. Uh, for instance, you may have found in your packs um, some glasses which um, give an idea of what it's like to have cataracts. So if, if you want to experiment now, you've perhaps been waiting to <laughs> have a go with your uh, cataract simulators. Um, so whether or not a person is totally blind uh, or with cataracts, etc., <laughs> um, he or she may choose to visit the, the Mona Lisa to experience the social environment of the Louvre in terms of uh, different lighting, colors, uh, touch, sounds, etc. 
therefore uh, advocating an approach which recognises the collective audience whilst also acknowledging its diversity is vital in achieving equitable, inclusive accessibility. This approach, which helps to prevent exclusion, will also bring financial benefits by widening the audience base. Given the, the growing number of people with sight and hearing loss in an ageing society, it's uh, imprudent to exclude this society from the arts, even if unintentionally. Uh, in fact, according to statistics published by the Arts Council of England, um, in, in the UK as a whole, in 2001, it was estimated that the spending power of disabled people, that's 14% of the population, was over £45 billion. Pounds. The economy suffers from excluding a market of 10.2 million people and 7 million carers in the UK, representing one in four households. From a financial perspective, it may also be lucrative to consider the benefits of access facilities for sighted and hearing patrons. Taking into account the, the whole spectrum of the audience and providing inclusive access for all may lead to an increase in customers, uh, ticket sales and higher profits. For instance, uh, innovative access solutions such as Google Glass and mobile phone apps may attract a uh, larger audience to the arts and uh, create significant economic opportunities, as already suggested, in fact, in the cinema industry where experiments have been conducted using these technologies. A first step is uh, making existing access facilities available for all. For example, uh, audio introduction, which is typically uh, a pre-recorded audio description providing background information prior to a performance, could easily be made available for everyone, for example, as an app. This access facility may appeal to all audiences as a more convenient alternative to hurriedly reading uh, programme notes and also due to extra insights and added entertainment value. At present, the, the London-based audio description company Vocalize already makes their audio introductions available free of charge uh, for anyone to download from their website. But uh, in the future, this method could easily be more widely adopted for all events um, at all arts venues, perhaps charging a small fee for users and therefore increasing revenue. Now, audio introductions alone, as is the case with any individual access facility, do not present a complete solution and uh, must be complemented by other access facilities. However, they do provide uh, a cost-effective method which can promote the move towards inclusive access and offers uh, financial benefits. The development and promotion of complementary access facilities requires uh, an initial injection of funds, but with the prospect of reaping financial and social benefits. Training and quality assessment are also fundamental to this development. And uh, although at present there is no certified training for arts access, at Queen's University we're working uh, with other leading institutions to propose a collaborative EU project which aims to develop a certified training course for arts managers and uh, other interested parties through a combination of online and face-to-face -face teaching. Government support is fundamental to the success of this project. Uh, for example, in encouraging arts management to complete this access training course. In conclusion, with the advancement of pioneering access solutions, the prospect of achieving economically viable, inclusive arts access is in sight. However, access provisions are currently limited and often segregated. 
Therefore, to, to facilitate successful implementation of the Northern Ireland Disability Strategy in compliance with legislation, much work is needed in developing sustainable, cost-effective access, as well as uh, training and assessment systems which ensure that quality is maintained. The driving force for such progress is raising awareness of access through increased dialogue and changing attitudes to move towards a holistic approach which benefits all with and without disabilities. Furthermore, the promotion of social cohesion is advocated by this outlook. Indeed, this shift in mentalities within the arts to consider society as a cohesive whole whilst also acknowledging its diversity may impact on discussions and policy in other sectors to encourage full integration of inclusive access into the, the health, cultural and educational agenda. Ultimately, if we are to respect the, the human right of access to all aspects of life, we must embrace our communal responsibility to weave inclusive access into the fabric of our society to share our rich culture and heritage with all. Thank you very much. <laughs>